Today we have an intriguing topic to dive into and that is the difference between APT and APT-GET. While they may seem similar, they do have some key differences. So without further ado, let's explore the comparison to help you distinguish between these two popular package managers. First, let's talk about APT. The Advanced Package Tool, or APT, is a comprehensive package management system that employs a range of tools to handle tasks like managing packages, updating the system, installing new software, and uninstalling packages. It's the backbone of package management in the systems. Now moving on to apt-get. apt-get is a command line utility whose primary purpose is to fetch data and packages from trusted sources. It plays a pivotal role in tasks such as installing new software, upgrading or removing packages and their dependencies. So what sets these two tools apart? Let's see the differences in terms of visual aspects and syntax. One key difference is the presence of progress bar. Let's use the command line to understand this. To demonstrate, let's install the synaptic package with apt. APT will display the progress bar while installing any package. The installation is now complete. Now use apt-get command to install Synaptic. apt-get won't show any progress bar during the installation process. Another key difference is showing the packages that need to be upgraded when updating the Linux system. At first, let's use this command. When you execute with apt, it will display the number of packages that have available updates at the end of the output. In my case, there are 35 packages that need to be upgraded. Now let's execute another command with apt. This will show me the specific packages that need to be upgraded. But if you run this command with apt-get to update the system, It's worth mentioning that you won't see any number of upgradable package here. Here is a list of some syntax variations between apt and apt-get. You can learn more about the difference in syntax in the article provided in the video description. Now let's jump into feature comparison. apt is the newer version of apt-get making it more compatible, it comes with more options and uses a verbose flag. On the other hand, apt-get is more widely used but it has fewer options and for verbosity, it relies on the v flag. apt can resolve dependency conflict automatically, it speeds up the installation process through parallel downloads and has an interactive mode. But apt-get lacks the ability to resolve any conflict which fails to install packages, and parallel downloading is not possible here. Also, it does not have any interactive mode. From the image presented on the screen, 
it is evident that APT integrates APT-GET, APT-CASH, and DPKGI into a unified package management system. Now, when you wish to install or search for a package using APT-GET, simply use it, followed by the package name in the command. However, with APT, you can achieve the same by replacing it with APT and then specifying the package name. So, when should you use APT instead of APT-GET? Well, if you're someone who prefers a more user-friendly experience and wants to see the progress of your package operations, then you should go for APT. Moreover, there are some syntax of APT-GET which can be hard to remember. Now, you might wonder whether you should only use APT or is there a place for APT-GET. You can use both commands, but it's increasingly advisable to lean towards APT especially if you're working with newer versions of Debian or Ubuntu. APT is better suited for these modern systems, while APT-GET might have limitations. APT and APT-GET come with some similarities. They are both used for package installation, updates, and removal, and some of their commands are similar. And both these tools have the same configuration file for managing repository. And that wraps up this video on APT versus APT-GET. Hope this video has shed some light on the key differences between these two and when to use which command in modern Linux environments.